Hello again on Twitch. I will continue on what I've done in the previous sessions, which are available in YouTube now. Um, let me share my screen. So what I was doing was reading Use the Index Luke from Marcus Renand and running the Postgres examples on Yugabyte because Yugabyte is um, Postgres compatible. So everything should run without any change, but the storage is different. And then there are some performance configurations, um, considerations that can be different. The last time, so that was available on, on YouTube and I was just looking at what we did the last time. We were looking at some functions. So if I go back to the page, I think it was about equality operator, indexes. And this is the kind of queries we did with an index on the name and some functions on the name. I will replay that quickly to match what we have done. And then we will see what we have in functions there. Maybe it was the same thing. We will see. OK, so my terminal is there. I think I've recreated everything we had the last time. And uh, again, if you are there, if you have questions, uh, we have the chat. And I'm just working on uh, what I planned, use the index loop. But if you have any question about anything related to uh, Postgres or Yugabyte, please do it. So the last time I think we ran this kind of query and let me check if I still have this installed. I have a small script that checked uh, some metrics that are available in the JSON endpoint. So basically this is the kind of thing that I've run on the employees table with a filter on upper of last name. And I have probably an index on last name, but not an upper the la of last name at this point, which means that at this point, uh, I'm doing a sequential scan, a full table scan. And the rows are filtered only later, which means that I read the 10,000 rows that I have in my table and 9,999 are filtered later. And this in Yugabyte means that uh, 10,000 rows were retrieved from the different nodes if I have multiple nodes and are filtered later, which is not the most op optimal way to do it. I will try something that I didn't plan just because we have some parameters and some improvement about push down. Let me check. So before creating the index, I will check uh, in the latest version uh, if we have some push down for this to avoid retrieving all rows, even if there are no indexes. And that's something I never tested yet. So I have to check the setting. PG setting. OK, and I think the setting is something like push down. I, I will see if I have it in my version. I'm not even sure because this is really a new feature. OK, show. 
So I will test that for, for the first time, a really new feature in Yugabyte. So let's do it again here. I'm running a sequential scan, a full table scan that will retrieve all rows and filter them later, as we can see there. And if I set this parameter to on, to enable some push downs, I will see if I have something different and I have no idea because we have implemented some push downs recently, but I don't know if it works in this case. Good. So, so this is a brand new feature in the latest uh, development version, not the stable uh, yet. And what I can see here, I have the same sequential scan there. But now what was a filter, let's, oh, this goes fast. Let's check what I had before. Before I had a filter, which is something that happens uh, later and rows removed by filter later in, in the Postgres part. Now I have something different, a remote filter. Very similar to things that we see with foreign data wrapper, but here we are not running through the foreign data wrapper. Uh, we are just querying the different nodes. From performance point of view, I will not check the execution time because I'm really on a small um, cluster here, but I should see a difference. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't see the difference in the number of six in the rock CV database because everything is still read. The difference is that uh, all the rows are not retrieved and are filtered later. So the real way to see the difference in performance here is on the execution plan with remote filter and uh, avoiding this uh, rows removed by filter. So that's one way. And if I check to the, the execution time I had, we may have an idea, but not, not no big difference here. It was 100 milliseconds there. And here, if I run that again, multiple time, yeah, we can see the difference. I am in 50 milliseconds there. And if I set the parameter to off, Yeah, the, the time is the double. And here I am on a cluster where all nodes are on the same server. So the network is not, is not important here, there, but uh, if you have a multi availability zone um, deployment or even region deployment, not moving those uh, 10,000 of rows is an improvement. Okay, so that's a really new feature, select version that is available on uh, the latest development version, not a stable one, and must be enabled with this parameter. This parameter is uh, default uh, off for two reasons. First, it is a new feature uh, in, in development version, so bugs may happen. Uh, but the second thing also is that Yugabyte allows rolling upgrades. We are distributed on multiple nodes and one node can be down and up with a newer version and then we can uh, rolling upgrade everything. But we want to avoid uh, that we are connected to a new version that tries to push down to a node that is not yet upgraded and cannot handle the, the push down. So that's also the reason why it is off by default. I will keep it on when trying other things there. And maybe I will switch to, to see the difference because uh, that, that's also new for me. Uh, so very important, I, I'm, I'm doing it again. The point is that even if I have a sequential scan, which is not a good idea there because I want to retrieve only one row, but even if I have uh, not the right indexes, at least 
this is offloaded and for people who know Oracle and um, Exadata, for example, where the storage is remote, this is very similar to offloading, uh, not, not bringing all rows to the, to the backend process uh, that we have. Okay, so I think last time we created an index, so that's the idea for this kind of query. If we want to retrieve and read only one row, because what we have seen is that uh, we were reading the wall table there. And if I run again the same query with this new index, I expect an index scan there. So index scan with an index condition. So this retrieves only one row, uh, not because of a remote filter, just because we have directly access to this row through the index. And I can see that in the statistics. So the statistics I displayed there are usually available in the, um, I, I will show you, uh, available in a JSON endpoint, which I can show there. So this is my cluster. And if I go to one tablet server node, I have three of them here. So let, let's show everything. I have a cluster with uh, three nodes there. So I'm going just to one node. And of course, each node has its statistics. If I go to the metrics, I have some metrics, some statistics in Prometheus format, but we have also the raw metrics in a JSON endpoint. And this is where I take my, uh, I was looking at six, for example. So this is where I take the statistics I display, except that I have a script that uh, gather them from all nodes and show me exactly what I want to see with the difference because the statistics are cumulative. So basically what I see there, and the screen is not very wide, but I see that on my index, this is the index I've created just before. So, so this index um, on a function, I seek directly to a specific place and I get directly one uh, index entry from there. But then to get the full, uh, the full information that I need, so the, the first name, last name, uh, all that, it goes to the table with multiple six. Of course, I could uh, I, I could have a covering index there. So I will drop the index and create it as covering index with an include with all colons that I want to query. So let me just copy paste from the output in the In there, if I run that, I'm creating the same index, but in addition to the key, so the upper last name and the primary key to reference the table, I have also everything. And there, I expect an index only scan for this. So those are things that we have seen in the previous live episodes, but I'm doing it again. I can see here an index on this scan. And the difference is that when I check the statistic, I read only from the index. I have no access to the table behind it. So that's one important thing. And you may think that you don't need the first name here because, uh, sorry, the last name here, because you have it in the index. But here in the index, we have the upper of the last name and uh, we cannot 
display the last name with its case without including it. So if you want an index only scan, you need to include all the columns, the, the ones that you see in the, in the output. So let me see that again. It's very important to understand how to read the execution plan. This is an explain where I mentioned verbose. And there I have this output section that tells me exactly which column I need. And those are the columns I need to put to the index if I want an index only access. And this is different than Postgres. In Postgres, even with an index only access, you have to read the table to, to, to get the visibility information. Here in Yugabyte, we have the visibility information stored within the, uh, the index, so no, no need to access to it which is very important because if you have a geo-distributed database, for example, this means that from anywhere where I am connected, I have to go to only one tablet, one specific place to this tablet. So this is the fat fastest we can do. So this is basically where we were last time when looking at Marcus Winand examples, and I will check them to see what else we have. So that was the idea uh, without the index sequential scan. So the same thing that you see in Oregon with a full scan, but in Postgres sequential scan and with a function. Yeah, uh, in, in Postgres, you have a bitmap, it's IP scan, but we don't have that in Yugabyte because we don't store the tables in IP. We have directly the, the table rows in the primary key index. And this is the index scan with an index on the function as I have created just before. I will not look at the statistics there and okay. So next one was about user-defined functions. So before we used an existing SQL function, upper, and this page is showing that you can use your defined function. So many people do not like to create stored procedures and stored function, but, but this is a case where it can be really interesting defining a function in the database and uh, having the ability to index it. So without reading more than that, I will create this function in my database. So I paste everything there and I run it. Uh, no commit. What? Return number. Okay. There are typos there. Uh, no, uh, return number. Create function. Return number as begin. Okay, so this example was uh, with the Oracle syntax create function as in Postgres and in Yugabyte, the body of the function is a string and we can use uh, quoted strings there. Let's see if this works. Yeah, need to mention the language. And it returns, uh, yeah. Date of birth in Postgres. I could put numeric to translate the, the number in Oracle, but we don't really need uh, decimals there. Date of birth is a date, and this returns an age. It's divided, it's truncated, so I think we can return an integer. Okay, 
Let me check my function. Passing a date here. <laughs> of course, not since that date. Create or replace. Translating from Oracle PL SQL to Postgres PL PG SQL is not always easy. Month between, yeah, we have a function in Postgres, but let me check if Marcus maybe has the Postgres function. Or let's do it differently. If you know uh, Juke, Juke is a framework that can generate SQL from, from a Java DSL. It's uh, made by uh, Lucas Eder. And Juke has a nice translator. I will try to use it to translate my function from Oracle to Postgres because I'm lazy and oh you got it it's the same um, unknown function okay I'm not sure that Juke understand all syntax that I have there unknown function number as begin return okay uh, actually i just want to translate those because the other i can do it I'm not sure I'm using that correctly. From oh yeah, I was writing in the middle. A non-function select input dialect. L l let me try again. So I wanted to translate that. from Oracle to Gigabyte or Postgres. Okay, so which function is not known here? Okay, uh, so that was a bad example. Some functions are not translated there. I may check that later. My other way I wanted to check if Marcus Wynn and as the example there. So my function was called up name, yeah. So that's easier. I will just copy paste it. to get the exact example that Marcus wanted to do. So it's using date part to replace the month between and 
create or re replace is using numeric why not and because it's using numeric it has a different signature I create the function I, I will look again at Chook uh, translator later because usually it works very well and here if I query uh, my function I have it let me just check two minutes because maybe I did something wrong there if I take the postgres function and I, I, I mean I, I think the procedural language is not totally supported there but I expected at least those kind of select to be translated. Non-function. Okay, not those function. No problem. Uh, so back there, I have my function. And the idea is to run a query that uses the function. I have no index yet. So let me check. That it works. And I will explain. Um, I will copy paste because I will explain and get my statistics. In the same way that I did before. So I reset my statistics. I explain plan for this. I execute. So statistics showed me that I've read everything because I have no index and the execution plan tells me that I'm doing a sequential scan with filter and rows removed by filter. And that's really interesting because I didn't think that we are going that deep with this new push down feature because here I am really using a Postgres function, which means that to push down this one, I need to run the function on the tablet server. The Postgres code is on all Yugabyte nodes, so that, that's perfectly understandable, but I didn't know that we are going so far and that's really interesting. I will compare. So that's really cool because I'm doing that live and discovering at the same time the new feature that we have. I'm not completely sure that the function was really executed remotely. So I will disable the push down and see the time. We, we will have also, uh, uh, I don't have it yet in this version, but we will have more statistics to know the number of uh, remote calls, RPCs, that are done from the execution plan. So here, it, it seems that um, I have 100 milliseconds when rows are removed later and if I enable the push down I have approximately the same time I I don't know if this is really executed uh, on the tablet server this is the goal I, I I don't know if it's yet the case because anyway we return lot of rows there 
what if I run it with something where we have no rows, so nobody has 100 years. And I can see the same execution time. So it's approximately the same execution time. So I guess that we see it in the plan, but it is not really pushed down there. I will check with, uh, with the developers. But that's the goal for future versions, uh, because the Postgres code is also in all tablet server. But pushing down a function means that all tablet server must have the function code accessible. The function code is in the catalog in the in the master uh, in the master server. So yeah, we'll see. Back to the original query where I think Marcus was uh, showing there that we can have a function. Yeah, there is another point. If you want to create an index on a function, this function must be deterministic because the function will be applied on the value at the time of create index. And you must be sure that uh, the result will be always the same. Because if you don't apply it uh, in the index, if you uh, full scan and apply it at runtime, then maybe the, the value is different. So it is important that the database knows that the function is deterministic. And I think we need to declare it. Postgres and the Oracle database trust the deterministic or immutable uh, in Postgres declaration. Uh, that means they trust the developer. So it's your responsibility not to tell the database that your function is deterministic if it's not. Was it created as deterministic in what I've copy pasted there? No. But I, I, I didn't even create the, the index yet. Huh? So let's see. Probably next page is where we create the index. Or not yet. Or not yet. But uh, in the example, this is. Yeah. This is uh, where the index is created. I will create it. And yeah, so Postgres tells me that I cannot create an index if I didn't mark the function as immutable. So I will drop the function and recreate it. As immutable. And I don't remember exactly where we put that. Let's check the documentation. From Google, Postgres documentation, always go to the current version. What? Yugabyte, uh, the version I use of Yugabyte is compatible with 11, but it's the same. And where do we mention immutable? Okay. In the create function. So just after the language, yeah. If some people are there, you can help me in the chat for those things. Uh, but but I think I'm 
streaming one hour earlier than usual. So maybe it's too early for US, for example. So I've created the function as immutable, and now I expect to be able to create an index on it. So the index key will be the, the, the value, the result of the function, and will reference the primary key of the row with this value of the function. And then I expect an index scan for this query. So let's run it and check the execution plan, index scan there with the index condition using the function and that returns 1000 of rows out of 10,000 and I can see in the statistics that I directly seeked into the index. Index name is invalid. Okay, yeah, that, that was in uh, Marcus' example to, 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 <laughs> to show that the index were, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Why? Invalid, that's a strange name. I think I have copied paste. Um, get age, get age. No, the create index. I don't know where the create index, but yeah, that's a strange name for for an index. But uh, why not? So here, one access to the index and then to the table to get those uh, thousand of rows from the different places of the table. And again, if I create it as covering, so I guess I was reading the same colon. Yeah, that will be interesting. I think I already mentioned it, but we will see that. Uh, I will call it covering. I don't really like calling an index invalid. Include. Uh, what? I always forgot the syntax, especially when I'm talking while typing. So here, if I check the execution plan for this, I have not yet an index only scan. And the reason is that I select the last name. Yeah. That's an interesting case. So let's see the query. First name, last name and gate age of date of birth. What I have in the index is first name, last name, as the include columns, and gate age of date of birth. So from that, you may think that this index is sufficient to get an index only scan, because I select this, this, and this. Except, and I think it's a Postgres restriction, except that you need, uh, at runtime, you need uh, also to execute the function and uh, cannot use directly the result from there. And 
fortunately, we see that in the execution plan. We don't see that in the execution plan. Yeah. We, we don't really see that. We see that the output is first name, last name, and get age. And uh, the point is that we need to add date of birth there. So let me recreate the index. I don't know if I was clear, so I will repeat it later. Um, the result of, of the function is in the index because it is used for the access but cannot be used directly to output the result of it. We need to include all the colons used by the function so that the function can be executed at runtime. Let's check that what I mentioned is right. Yeah, now. I have an index on this scan there with exactly the same output, all that, but uh, but now it is really an index on this scan. This is it's very useful to look at execution plans, and I can check the Postgres documentation about uh, covering indexes or include index. Index only scan. I, I'm quite sure that it is mentioned somewhere with functions. Postgres planner is currently not very smart about such case. So this is the case where we have a function and we have uh, created the index on the result. I don't know exactly where. Yeah, this one, for example. We have a function on x. We query only the, the result of the function. We need to include x as well. So because Postgres Planner is not currently very smart. And uh, the, the thing is that the, the planner doesn't look into the expression to see if uh, it can be used and, uh, and and then all columns must be there. All column needed by the query must be available for the index. This is not a big problem, just something that you need to know. I mentioned earlier that it's as simple as being sure that in the index you have everything that you see in the output of the verbose explained plan. Uh, that's not actually true. You need, if you have function, you need all the colons that are needed to re-execute the function at uh, runtime. But most important, the access in the index condition is there. So I think I went a bit further from what was mentioned there. Let's look at it. Yeah, good points. Uh, so Marcus mentioned that when you tell the database that the function is deterministic, the database will rely on it. But this was a lie. Where is my create function? So my function takes a date and returns the age. By using a function age, which is in Postgres. Uh, so the Oracle version was using the date. Let's see what this function in Postgres does. If I find it, H 
age function calculates age. Uh, prefer the documentation. Okay, no problem. Let's see this site. The 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 point I I, I want to to mention is that. The age depends on, on the current date. Not sure it is mentioned there, but the age depends on the current date. For example, the Oracle implementation was using this date. I tried with uh, with uh, now, uh, but yeah, because I didn't know that uh, Postgres has a function about that. But this is not deterministic because for the same date of birth, my my date of birth will not change in the future years, but my age will change. So here I am lying. This works because uh, I created the index in this year, but next year this will be wrong because the function will still, the index will still index the age at the time of index creation and that will be wrong. So be careful with indexing functions. Functions needs to be deterministic and you must be sure that it is deterministic. With, with the Oracle version, it's quite easy because you see this date and I think that Oracle uh, uh, also prevents you to, to, to do that. I, I don't exactly remember, but this date is not deterministic by definition because if you run it uh, one day later, it will change and uh, Postgres has the equivalent behind the, um, the age function. Okay, so what was... For so now, I understand why Marcus uh, called his index invalid. This is not a, a valid case for it's a valid function, but it's not a valid case to create an index on it. Okay, checking the time. My goal is to stream only one hour, but uh, maybe maybe I will go a bit further. So in the next page, Marcus mentions that or oh, once against over indexing. The reason is that you, you can have a lot of indexes and for selects is fine. I see two reasons why you don't want too many indexes. Uh, we will see the one about changes, but even if you only query, the more indexes you have, the more work you put on the optimizer side, on the query planner side, and the more choices the optimizer has, the more mistakes it can make, so that's one thing. But more important, each index must be maintained, which means that when you insert a row, you will have to update the index entry. When you delete a row, you will have to uh, delete the index entry. And when you update a colon, you will have to update uh, <clears throat> the index if the index has the colon in it. So basically uh, you you want to have indexes to serve your queries, your read, but you don't want to to, to, to have a, a bad consequence on data ingestion and, and, and that really depends on the application. Most of applications usually insert once and then query a lot. So it's good to have indexes, but if data ingestion is critical, uh, be careful with indexes. So here, um, yeah, we, we'll go to the next page. So. Or maybe uh, before going to parameterize queries, and maybe we'll see that next week, I, I will try to show the problem with too many indexes. So first I will remove my non-deterministic 
my index on non-deterministic function. Uh, so the table we are using is employees. I want to describe it. So here I have, how many indexes do I have? I have the primary key. It's not really an index, it's the table itself in NuGabyte. Huh? In, uh, in Postgres, tables are stored in NIP tables and uh, primary key is an additional index to maintain. Here, we show it as a primary key index, but it is the table actually. I have an index on the last name. I have an index on subsidiary, last name, first name, phone number. And I have an index on the function upper, which includes some uh, data. Okay, and now to show the consequences with all those indexes, I will do some DMLs and that, that's what I will do today. So snap table to show the statistics, snap reset to reset the statistics before. Snap table. And what if I uh, insert data? So here, all columns are not new label, okay? So I, uh, or mostly. So I will insert into employees for all non-null um, ones. So I will need an employee ID, a first name, a last name, Date of birth is not mandatory. I will not put it. I need a phone number and a subsidiary ID. And I will put, I will see if I have duplicates. Putting big number there. First name, last name. Phone number, I will not put mine, but starts with Switzerland. And subsidiary ID, I have no idea. I guess we have a foreign key. I will just guess to see if one is okay. The database will tell me if, so I reset statistics. Try to insert one row and check the statistics. Okay, so I've inserted just one row, then I expect an access to the employees table, which is actually the primary key index. I can see seven, six there uh, because the, the, the storage of Yugabyte is a document database and in the current state, we store each column as a document. There is some improvement for fast ingestion where we will store the whole row into, a, into one document, but for the moment, it's uh, just one. And this is why I have seven, because I have uh, five columns plus the key plus an entry for, for the table. But in addition to that, I have the index maintenance for the last name because this last name must be also inserted in the index. That was an index on many columns, which includes also yeah subsidiary and last name. So this is all, all, uh, also maintained. And the upper name is also maintained. So my many indexes have consequences where instead of just going to one place in one tablet to insert my row, I have to update the secondary indexes and this has a cost. So three indexes updated there. I add 
three indexes. Uh, yeah, I didn't update the phone number. Yeah. Okay, now I will do an update. So I will update a colon that I find in no index and I will update all columns. Update employees without a where clause to update all columns and something that is not indexed. I have index of phone number, I have, yeah, I have index on date of birth. I don't have index on date of birth, so I will set date of birth. Um, just putting a date there. So if I run this update on the 10,000 rows, I see a lot of accesses everywhere. Yeah, uh, so this was a full scan and I can see the consequence of the full scan. I'm scanning everything there, but only the table, not the index because I have no index there. If in addition to the date of birth, I update the last name, I don't remember, uh, last name was, yeah. Let's say I put all last name is in upper. So if I run this update, so before I had, So this is around four, four, four times the number of rows. It takes longer. I'm on a really small machine, actually. I'm running my labs on the, on the Oracle Cloud free tier because we have three VMs there. and a lot of things updated there. Just because I updated the last name columns, I update all indexes where I have the last name. So this index on last name, the index, the other index on subsidiary plus last name because of the include. And of course the table. So this is basically showing The problem with too many indexes, it's really cool to add indexes for each query, especially including colons, but be careful with the colons that you update. Uh, you have to maintain it and it's a balance between what you, you query and what you update. So be careful when you include colons, if uh, there are a lot of updates, it has some, some impact there. Uh, okay, it's about one hour. I will um, look at what we have next. So that was about over indexing and statistics are important there. The way I gather statistics here is using the JSON endpoint, but we will add more statistics in the execution plan of uh, Yugabyte to, to be able to see that on an execution plan. The, the, the endpoint is more uh, to get the global uh, statistics about the cluster to see the hotspots on some indexes, but always good to have them in the execution plan. The next, or maybe I will, uh, uh, I will continue. Everything is recorded anyway, and I put it on on uh, YouTube. My goal is really to cover all. Uh, all chapters there, so you can see that I have a lot. Let, let's continue a bit with parametrized queries. So, 
yeah. Uh, th this this I may skip for 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 Yugabytes. I, I'm just checking what uh, what Marcus is saying there, but I guess that the idea is to show that depending on, on the parameters, it may be more interesting to do a, a wrench scan or um, or a full scan depending on the selectivity, which is really right. Let me check. So that was about the function user defined. Yeah. Um, the the point is that currently, but I, I can I, I can show it uh, in an example. Currently, we are very basic in the query planner in Yugabyte about selectivity, which means that I can analyze the table, but the selectivity. Let, let me check the the query mentioned there by Marcus. So. The distribution of, of subsidiaries are probably very different. And I will check them to be sure. If I select uh, subsidiary ID, and count the number of employees there. Well, country was OK, but from employees group by subsidiary ID order by count so I have some subsidiary subsidiaries with not a lot of employees and some with more 13 has a lot of employees and 20. Not a lot, which means that 420, maybe the index wrench can is better because you reach with just a small number of rows. But for 30, uh, because you have 10% of data that you need, it's probably easier to scan all the table rather than, than getting them. Uh, of course, this may change on the distribution of data, and this change also in Yugabyte, because uh, thanks to the fact that we store the table in the primary key, we don't have this problem with clustering factor that we find with databases with heap tables like Oracle or Postgres. Um, so I, I, I will check this, but the, the important point, so we have two queries. One for 30 and one for uh, 20. And I will explain. Not really interested by the results. I'm interested by the execution plan there. So I will explain both of them. We'll see the statistics uh, later. For the moment, what is important is the plan. Index only scan. Yeah, I have my index on, on uh, with the included columns. So I have index only, only scan for, for both of them. But most important, Estimation of rows, yeah. <laughs> I will explain with cost this time and don't really need to execute it. So before I was looking at, at the execution statistics, here I'm looking at the estimation for both. And with a cost-based optimizer, you can expect that the optimizer knows about the distribution of data and then will estimate differently the number of rows. And you can see that it's not the case there because we have a very basic 
optimizer. Even if I analyze the table, analyze. And, uh, and run this again, both. So you can see that the number of rows has changed. So analyze does something, counts the number of rows. Uh, but the current query planner in Yugabyte doesn't apply the selectivity of the predicates there which may sound very basic, but remember that Yugabyte DB is a database for OLTP. And with OLTP, usually we prefer to have predictable execution plans rather than changing with the values. If I compare with Oracle, where the cost-based optimizer is much, much more uh, powerful than uh, Postgres, the plan can change, and what happens with OLTP applications like uh, ERPs, SAP, uh, PeopleSoft, all that, what they do is set some parameters to fix the execution plan and to avoid this change of plan. So I, I'm not saying that it's good that we don't uh, calculate the selectivity. We will do it, we will implement it, but it's not a priority for OLTP because uh, we want stable execution plans. So this is where you will see different results from Marcus in Winant web page, where a database that is aware of the distribution may choose different access paths depending on the value. In, uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because with the index I have there, it's an index only scan. And that's the fastest we can do. And it's still good. Index only scan is still good to get 10% of, of rows because we take a range of rows uh, and, and they are stored, uh, they are stored uh, uh, contiguously in the index. We don't have to go to the table because we don't have if tables. If I remove this index, So what I'm saying is with this ideal index, you don't really care about the parameters because the index only scan will be always good. So you have a plan that will not change, that is predictable and that is optimal. Without this index, uh, the index is not employee, the index is this one. If I look at this again, I have no index on subsidiary ID there, or maybe I have. No, I have no index on subsidiary ID. Let's check the definition, employees. So my table has its primary key. Yeah, so, th so this is really interesting. And this is where it's different in Yugabyte. Uh, well, it's different because we don't have a table because we store everything in the primary key. The table is defined with a primary key starting with subsidiary ID. And that's what you want to do for multi-tenancy or when you have subsidiaries. You have an employee ID, but you can find the same ID in different subsidiaries. So you add the subsidiary ID to the primary key. And I added it in front of it there especially because I went uh, to hash on it, which means that uh, I can distribute the multiple subsidiaries into different nodes. So that's the choice uh, there for the distributed database. And because I start with the subsidiary ID, even without uh, the full index, the, the index only uh, index that I add, a query on subsidiary ID is an index scan. And an index scan on the primary key is exactly the same as an index only scan. So that's an important point. 
it still displayed as index scan because from Postgres, which was built for heap tables, this is an index scan because uh, the, all the columns I need are not defined in the index. But because the table, all the columns are stored in the primary key in Yugabyte, this is a range on the primary key. So it's still the best access path that you can do to get a range of value. I'm saying a range, even if I'm distributed by hash on sub zero AD, but with an equality, it's just the same uh, hash value. So this is really fast. And I will check the, the statistics to prove that it is really fast. So let's snap table. So that will display the, the old statistics. And I will run this one. with few rows and few access. So this is really accessing to the primary key to get 34 rows is just looking in the index structure for 35 because there is a beginning of the table and, and then the, the different rows uh, places. So this is really optimal. You don't need anything else in this case. You don't need other indexes. If I run the other one, where I have many, many rows, 1000 actually, I expect 1000 access in the index. And, and, and those are really close, uh, you see them as six because each one has different colon, but I'm really accessing uh, uh, one physical part of the table there. Okay, um, and then there is nothing else to do and, and I don't really care about not having the right selectivity in the estimation. That's the important point. In a database with heap tables, you need a cost-based optimizer that will estimate the number of rows, uh, multiply that with the clustering factor uh, to estimate when it is better to go through index or go uh, full scan. Here, we don't need all this complex uh, calculation just because we have a fast path directly to the range. If I had no index, so if I was looking to something else, the push down also uh, can be useful. So that was about parameters and the other point about parameters is that with Oracle, Oracle tries to share the execution plan between the queries. In Postgres, you don't have a shared pool uh, and that's the same in Nugabyte. So each query will be passed ex except when you use prepared statements and, uh, and prepared statement can choose between a custom plan or a generic plan but you don't have this bind picking uh, issues where a query may use a plan that is not suited to, to it. So everything that is described there doesn't really apply uh, to Yugabyte because we have more stable plans uh, for, for this case. Of course, if we prepare statement and if there are multiple plans where the column is not in the primary key, it still matters. Uh, and this is also where the push down will help uh, because 
a full scan is expensive when it returns all the rows to the to the Postgres backend, but if it's uh, filtered on the nodes, it's less a problem. Next one is about uh, searching from for ranges, and and that's very very important in a distributed database like uh, Yugabyte, because as we see in the definition of my table, employees. Distributing on a hash of the subsidiary ID is my choice. It's always easier to distribute on hash because you don't have to care about the range of values and the distribution in, in it. What happens with a hash uh, is that in the index, in the primary key, just before the value itself, so let me select subsidiary ID from employees. Don't remember why I have negatives, but why not? I will select distinct. distinct. So those are my different subsidiary IDs. But because it is hashed, what happens uh, internally is that a function yb hash code is applied to it, which gives a hash value of the ID. So here I don't have a lot of IDs, but if I have millions of it, I have a restricted number of hash value. And the idea is that then the hash values uh, go in front of the index and then is used to distribute the value. If you want to see the full range of hash values, If I calculate YB hash code for values from one to one million, I don't know if it will be slow in my system. No, more, no. So I will check the minimum of them. Uh, I've probably some optimization there because the, the minimum is actually zero. So let's do that differently with n as select generate series I could also call uh, call some random but uh, zero one six. I will call that n, and I want to select yb hash code from n. And I want to select the min. Yeah. Before I had an optimization uh, happening, and, and there with the with close, it is materialized. So I really have my million of rows. So you see the minimum YB hash code, and maximum is uh, this one. So you don't need more hash codes because you will probably not have more, co uh, more nodes uh, in your Yugabyte cluster. And this helps to distribute. So what I'm saying is that basically an index is stored ordered. And uh, if you shard on a range, ascending or descending, you just use the value. And if you shard on a hash, it just applies the uh, hash code in front of it. 
And I was saying that when showing the definition employees where here, I used a hash code, which make it very easy. I know that subsidiaries will be distributed into my, uh, my uh, cluster. Uh, but I do that also because I know that I will never have a predicate on a range of subsidiary because if you look at a range, then the hash code will be different. Let me show that maybe showing N, YB hash code of N from N where N less than 10 order by n. So here you can see that a range of values have completely different hash code. So basically, this means that when I query with an equality on subsidiary ID, I can go directly to this point. But if I add a query saying subsidiary ID less or equal than 20. I cannot use the scan of the primary key. So the index scan on the primary key uh, uh, because it is hashed. So it has to go to a sequential scan. So this is where it is very important to Keep in mind that when you distribute on hash, it is easy, but don't do that when you know that your value will be queried with a range between less than, higher than, uh, like something. So in this example, subsidiary ID, I see it's a generated ID, so it doesn't really have a meaning. So there is no reason to query on a range. It's probably the same for employee ID. However, for first name, last name, you can see that I defined the index on last name with ascending. So that in addition to queries like explain, select, start from employees where last indexes on last name, uh, yeah. Don't remember if I have put my name somewhere. Um, anyway, it's not executing. This is just the plan. So with an equality, it is used, but also with an inequality because my index is uh, is defined as ascending or descending, could be descending, uh, and, and of course you can also do that. Uh, so when I know that I have queries like that, and I, I, I can also query like all that starts with P, this is still an index range scan. Because starting with a letter, when I have an index uh, sharded on a range, I can still go to this range. And you can see that Postgres transformed the like P something with, well, it, it still filters on the, on the like, but it knows that it can start at P and end before Q. So that's an optimization from a, from uh, Postgres that, that we have in, in Yugabyte. And this is possible because this index is a range index. Select PG index, uh, no, I, I think I missed something in the function to, so, to see the definition of the index, get index def. Let's check. Get index def pg.
where's the definition of that here? Uh, I probably uh, did not get pg get index def, yeah. pg get index def. Uh, not a relation a function. Well, I don't really know. Don't remember the, the syntax, but anyway, we see the definition there for a ascending, and it could be descending. So that was the point about 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 um, the ranges. So inequalities with greater than, less than, between, even alike, under certain circumstances. Of course, if uh, if I query with a like, but without that first, for example, all name ending with a T, this, this cannot be translated to a range because they are in different places. But let's check Marcus uh, examples with that. So he's using parameters there. Subsidiary ID. So that's important. Uh, understand the order of the index. I if you want to know more, I, I will not repeat that. If you want to know more, on YouTube, uh, Yugabyte YouTube, Yugabyte YouTube. If I look for the YFTT sessions, every Friday we have some uh, uh, some episodes on small technical parts and I did a few about indexes. Let me just show uh, this is the playlist. Yeah, there are always a lot of ads on YouTube and playlist YFTT Friday talks. I had two sessions, if I remember well, about indexes, where I'm explaining a bit more about uh, that. Indexes, this one, and partial indexes. Okay, I will stop on that. Maybe I will look uh, uh, before the next step episodes uh, next week, I think I will do the same. And where we will look at partial indexes. In Postgres as in Yugabyte, always important to check that your condition is an index condition. So we have three level of conditions. Index condition is directly the access to the index. Uh, the remote filter is after a full scan, but done on the on each node, and uh, the filter alone is when all rows were retrieved without specific index, without specific push down, and then the Postgres layer in the backend uh, filters out the rows. Okay. Um, and there are already things that we have seen with starting and all that. So I let, let's just check what is index merge. Concatenated, yeah. We we will see that be, because that's also different in Yugabyte. So next time, let me just put where we were. We were in the range. I will put that in my file to be able to come back quickly the next time to that. Uh, the recording I will put on uh, on uh, YouTube and um, 
and we will continue probably next week. I may do more Twitch on things where I want to investigate. For for example, uh, you see the push down, it's just a power enter. I've just seen that we have released it in the latest version and I wanted to test it and, and why not test uh, testing that uh, live. So thank you very much for attending. There are not a lot of people live. Maybe it's not the, the best uh, time. Do not hesitate to tell me, contact me on Twitter, uh, look at the blogs, I have an email, I put that on uh, YouTube, on Twitch, if you prefer different time uh, of the day, I can also look at that. It's the most convenient for me as I'm in Europe, but maybe it's too early for US, contact on uh, on LinkedIn and uh, see you next time. If you follow on, on Twitch, you will see when, uh, when I am uh, uh, there. Okay, thank you and have a nice uh, day or evening, depending where you are. I'm stopping the streaming.